Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today we're going to be taking a look at Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea side and his best 11. We're going to go into tactics, formations, and dive into each player that we think should pick up a position. Get into the comments below. I want to see team lineups down there. What formation are you going to play? What style of football? And of course, which players are you going to pick for your starting 11? Let's dive into the video. So Chelsea obviously have, have done supremely well on the under Thomas Tuchel, they've really taken themselves to the next level. But the question I'm going to answer for you guys today is what is Chelsea's best 11? Uh, that is a big one. Uh, with the uh, with a few big games coming up, I think that's kind of a, a poignant, poignant game. So when I look at Chelsea, I think there's a number of different shapes they can play. I think Chelsea can play a 3-5-2 in a sense. We've seen that in big games in recent weeks. Uh, but also they can they can flip that up. Um, and pretty much switch to uh, double pivot, three at the back, um, two wing backs, double pivot, and then two attacking midfielders off Timo Werner. I think both give them good, um, you know, a good sort of variation in what they do. I like the way that you could potentially have it as a, uh, a front three in a sense of two tens coming off the line and one forward that's going to run in behind. I also like it in a sense that you could potentially position it as a uh, one attacking midfielder that can get on the ball and Mason Mount, get himself turned. And then you've got two bits of pace in behind that can be found with Jorginho's passing from midfield and obviously the support play of the two wingbacks. I think Chelsea got a really good option. But for me, the best shape for Chelsea right now is this 3-5-2. Jorginho holding, Kante um, on the right-hand side, Mason Mount on the left-hand side, and Werner and Havertz as the front two. Uh, of course, we saw that set up um, for Chelsea against Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-final. They were simply superb. Not only Jorginho bossed it in defensive midfield, 91.2% uh, pass accuracy, but six interceptions more than he's made in a single game in the, uh, in the league or in the Champions League in all comps this season, but also it allows the likes of Mason Mount and Kai Havertz to, to play in that central midfield area. And I think tactically that gives Chelsea a lot. You know, Mason Mount is obviously the playmaker, the guy that's going to get into number 10, the guy that's going to create. And Angulo Kante is going to go box to box. And then you've got a, a, a deep line playmaker. And I think that is the perfect blend of a midfield for me. You know, you've got three components there that work really well. You know, as much as I do like the double Matt Zala, uh, deep line playmaker, like a uh, Pep Guardiola Man City, I can appreciate what Angulo Kante gives with his energy. Uh, you know, you've got Werner's pace, his ability to assist, and obviously Kai Havertz is class to spin in behind the defence. I think this is the best lineup uh, for Chelsea as well. So just looking at that best lineup in terms of players, um, Eduardo Mendy uh, overperforming his post shot expected goals by 0.02 per 90. By comparison, Kepa was underperforming his uh, uh, post shot expected goals by 0.29 last season. Um, moving into the back line, of course, looking at Chelsea's back line, I think this is the best three at the moment. Uh, Christensen, Thiago Silva and Rudiger. I think that gives you a good balance of um, ability to win tackles. Obviously, with Rudiger, he's won 75% of his tackles in the league this season, which is a massive number. Anything above 70% is very, very impressive. You've also got Thiago Silva, who is that controlling um, influence in the middle. Uh, in terms of him, he's in the 90th percentile um, for passes, pass accuracy and progressive carries. You know, that's the interesting side that sometimes he will drive out of defence with the ball. And obviously, Christensen is a solid player. He's come into the team and worked quite well, allowing Aspel Equator to play a little bit more as a as a right wing back. I think that's an interesting side. Uh, you know, there's nothing that's really outstanding about his numbers, Aspel Equator, but defensively, very, very solid. Offensively as well, can put some really good balls into the box. Um, in terms of uh, Jules 1, he's won 2.94 Jules per 90, which puts him in the 94th percentile. Um, so, you know, that's something that, that he could really... Uh, do that, of course, was aerial duel. So something that he could, you know, utilise um, in an attacking sense as well as a defensive sense. Uh, let's move into midfield. Of course, Jorginho is an absolute hub in defensive midfield. I think I think he needed Thomas Tuchel. I think he needed Thomas Tuchel, Jorginho. You know, his vision, his passing range has always been sensational. But Lampard, sorry, didn't quite work out. Uh, but now we're looking at his statistics. 6.29 passes into the final third per 90. Puts him fourth amongst central midfielders in the Prem this season. You know, you're pairing that with Kante's box-to-box -box nature we previously spoke about. And Kante's back to his best. 
Best return in the last five years. Pretty crazy numbers. 6.34 tackles per interceptions per 90. Um, partner that with Mason Mount's ability to do everything. Squad best in chances created, goals, passes into the box, progressive passes, through balls, switches, shot creating actions, pressures, successful pressures, total touches and successful dribbles. Mason Mount is Chelsea FC at the moment. I think if you have 10 Mason Mounts and, and um, Mendy, you, you're laughing. Uh, I just realised that we have the wrong name in goal. Uh, GG's in the chat for me. Uh, bang, correct. Um, and let's finish things off with the, with the two... Uh, the two forwards, uh, I think first and foremost, Kajovic has got an elite level ability to receive. The stats, he's received 10.04 progressive passes per 90, putting him in the 95th percentile. And brother Timo Werner, outright club top scorer, top assister, 0.7 non-penalty XG plus XA per 90. Let's put some respect on his name. 88% percentile. Lovely, lovely stuff. And that for me is Chelsea's best starting 11. The other one that you potentially could throw him, I think you've got to give him some respect uh, for his play this season, is of course Christian Pulisic. You know, whether he could fill in for either position there, whether you wanted to go slightly more offensive. Um, I think in a way, you could also look at um, Ziyech. He's been very good in the Champions League, I think, Hakim Ziyech. You know, you could throw him in as well. Then there's a lot of options. You know, if if you want to keep Werner in there as well, you can throw Ziyech into midfield, go a little bit more offensive, um, you know, with sort of two number 10s and two strikers. That could work quite well. Uh, but lovely, lovely stuff, guys. Lovely stuff. Chelsea next season. This system is going to be the one. So there we have it, guys. That is my thoughts on Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea and the best 11. Get into the comments below. Give me yours. Smash that like button. And of course, subscribe to Statman Dave Clips if you're new. And we'll see you next time.